Ken Rasmussen is a political scientist and a professor at the University of Regina. Thank you so much for coming in to join me today. Uh, let's start with Brad Wall's legacy. He did come in for a year-end interview uh, with the CBC and he talked a little bit about uh, his strengths or what he felt were his strengths during the last year. So let's take a listen to that. Okay. I wanted to be a part of an economic restructuring, you know, to, to our growth plan sought to to make sure our regulations are competitive, our taxes were competitive, but also that we would, as a government, you know, invest quite a bit more on the infrastructure side and create some lasting economic changes, and I think that happened. Do you think Wall's right? Well, I think he's partly right and he's partly wrong. Uh, I mean, last year was not a great year for the government. Uh, to say that uh, the previous year was a, a series of ongoing successes would be a big mistake. I think, yes, uh, he, you know, the ongoing work on the, t uh, the tax reforms and so on, but those were done uh, years before. Uh, the, 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 the progress to that was made a long time prior to last year. Last year was a bad year. The government tried to engage in transform transformative change, as they called it, didn't define what that was and frankly we've seen relatively little uh, and uh, they produced a budget which really uh, amounted to a series of protests, backlash and crawl downs from the government. So there was a lot uh, in the last year that uh, doesn't strike one as being particularly uh, noteworthy. Mm -hmm. and lots of change in the last year and also lots of change coming up this month as we see a new leader of the SAS party. So uh, what are your thoughts on how that will pan out? Who do you think will win? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, uh, the, the amount of information that's coming out isn't, uh, isn't uh, enough to make a, a clear uh, uh, prediction, but it's probably going to be Scott Moe or uh, Ken Shevel Day Off would be certainly my prediction. Uh, but um, whoever is the new leader, though, they're not going to have the advantages that Brad Wall had. I mean, they're going to be uh, somebody without the same charisma, uh, the same ability to, to bridge the province. Um, but also, um, it's the old Saskatchewan back. I mean, they talked about the new Saskatchewan for 10 years, that we're never going back. Well, frankly, we are back. Uh, that, uh, you know, the, the provincial government is badgering Ottawa for more equalization money. Uh, we're seeing the, the, you know, the, the kinds of deficits uh, that they promised weren't going to be here again. This is part of what was to be Brad Wall's legacy, the new Saskatchewan. And unfortunately, the old Saskatchewan is making a, uh, a return. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we also sat down with Nicole Saar uh, of the NDP uh, to talk about what she felt her party accomplished in the last year. So let's take a look at okay. what she had to say. We were able to see some great... Uh, um, some rollbacks on on some very difficult measures like uh, the library cuts um, Partially the partial repeal of Bill 40. They still need to repeal all of Bill 40 like the province has asked Well, Ken, do you agree with what she was saying there about the repeals that she they you know? Yeah, you know, it's funny because uh, governments don't like to backtrack and the government did a lot of backtracking after this year's budget. And so the, the opposition can take a lot of credit. Whether they deserve it or not is another question. But yeah, they're, they're going to take credit for the government having to uh, redress its budgetary commitments. And it made the government look very uh, disorganized. It hadn't done its consultations. It looked weak. Uh, so yeah, I think the NDP had a, had a, a strong year uh, this year. And the government had, a, frankly, a, a less than stellar year. How do you think that um, the public pressure paid into that as well as the NDP pressure? Well, I think it, it was it certainly uh, the public uh, did, the, did, the, did the heavy lifting, if you will. Uh, the NDP took the credit for it, but I mean, that's the way politics works. And I think uh, it, it did reflect poorly on the government, that they hadn't done the work in preparing the budget. Uh, they, they didn't seem to know where they were going. Uh, they don't seem to be able to govern in, uh, in, a, uh, in an old Saskatchewan environment in which uh, the money is no longer there. Well, you talked about uh, the NDP having a stronger year than, say, the SAS party. What do you think it would take for the NDP to actually win an election? Well, it's hard to say. Um, you know, those are, I mean, it's, it's still two years off, uh, according to our uh, fixed election dates legislation. Um, and so it may, uh, you know, things may change. Uh, the, you know, the SAS party has a new leader, of course. But I think it's going to be harder for the uh, Sask party uh, than it would have been with Brad Wall. He was incredibly popular. He was more popular than the party. Whoever, out of these five people, none of them have the charisma, the charm uh, that Brad Wall had. So it's going to be a very difficult. Plus, you're governing, you know, when Brad Wall became premier, this province was booming. He took over a boom. Uh, and governed very effectively with that. Now, in this hard economic time, any premier is going to be a cutback premier. And he's not going to have a lot of friends in, in many constituencies in the province. So the job is going to be substantially different. 
Uh, and the nature of the Sask Party is changing too. It's clearly rearing its rural, uh, you know, teeth, if you will. And all the leaders are trying to court, the potential leaders are trying to court rural support. Uh, and so people are paying attention to that, that is this becoming a rural party and not a party for all Saskatchewan. And speaking of the election, you mentioned it briefly, we'll have to wait a couple of years. Do you think there's a possibility that we could see an election sooner? Yeah, there is a possibility. I think, um, you know, fixed election dates are ignored all the time in Canada. The federal government has ignored them. We have ignored our own because there was a conflict. Uh, and so, yeah, it would be easy enough to uh, predict a scenario where the new leader feels that they need a mandate, that they're worried about a deteriorating economic uh, condition, and that they want to go to the, uh, the polls earlier than this and maybe take advantage of a disorganized NDP party. That's a highly risky strategy, though, uh, for, I mean, you often look desperate, you look scared, you look opportunistic if you do that, and, and often the, the history of going to the polls early has not been very good for incumbent governments. It's usually uh, suffer, you usually suffer. Now, could they hang on? Perhaps. But in the midst of a transformation like they're going through, uh, you know, transforming government, it's like a new government coming into place. So then going into an election right off the bat, I think that would be a, a, difficult, uh, a difficult task. Lots to watch for, Everett. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. It's a pleasure.